All right, so that's how we did it. That's how we wired up the gauges. Check them out, man. Aren't they freaking cool? We got them to work for the Chevelle. Woo! All right, so now we're working on the gauges. This is These are Marshall gauges. These are made in the United States. I like them. I like the look of them. And so the center cons, so I molded them to fit these gauges specifically. And I bought my gas, I mean, my uh, Deutsch connectors from Monkey Fab Garage. They're a great small company. They're just a couple guys. They do great service. Deutsch connectors, I feel, after, after a, a lot of research, they're just supposed to be a lot better. Uh, I believe that's what kind of, you know, stuff like McLaren and stuff like that uses. They're just a sealed connector. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put the Marshall gauges in there, and then we're going to see. So, so I know that the most important thing is probably going to be the water temperature. So I'm going to put that right here because that's something I can look at when I'm sitting in the car easily. And I wanted to put these to where if I'm in, the, if I'm driving and I look over, I'm not going to struggle to have to see where the gauges are, right? So they're just going to, they're going to be right there. They're going to, you know, they're going to all be nice and easy. Now in the back where I won't be able to see them very easily, like the voltmeter, I don't need to check that all the time. I don't need to be able to glance down and see that in an instant. You know, that's something like if there's a problem, that's probably the only time that you're really ever going to check that. So these are a nice tight fit. I can't remember who made this. I think it was an auto meter part that I molded on here. I made another video about that. I'm sure you've seen it. Or if you haven't, you just go in my videos. I got it there, how I made this. This is such a tight fit. I don't really even need the backing uh, plates, but I'm gonna put them in anyway, just to kind of make sure that they don't work their way out for whatever reason. I don't think that they ever will. I think that you're gonna have a, I had a hard time getting them in and out. It's just such a tight fit. It's kind of, a friction fit if you would say uh, and I, I really like this way it's nice and tight I don't have to worry about them rattling or something like that because if you've ever had a car with a big cam or something like that you always get these little rattles that can drive you so crazy make you so mad you want to kick a puppy those line up nicely so your eye can see even the slightest of differences so fuel fuel gauge although I'll probably only fill up my tank twice before I sell the car maybe maybe three times I don't know, but it's just, you know, you've got to have it. You don't really want to have a car without a fuel gauge. I had a truck that didn't have a fuel gauge working right. And so I used to just estimate the fuel. I knew like my truck got, I think like 12 or 14 miles a gallon. It was a Dodge Ram. And so it was never a big deal, right? Until one day my O2 sensor went out. So I got terrible gas mileage, like less than half. And my truck died. And I'm like, oh man, something happened to my truck. And I could not figure it out. My buddy's like, well, maybe you just low on fuel. And I'm like, no, I know how much fuel my, my truck used. I know the last time I filled it up, I reset my trip meter every single time. And uh, after that, I realized like, don't ever do that. Don't ever think that something can't go wrong because there was a check engine light on all the time. And I just never checked it because it was like, well, I already know what it is. So don't do that either. There we go. Now those fit in there nicely. Now I'm gonna turn these over. You see the back side? there's just a few wires. So what we're gonna do is First, we're gonna put the mounts on. These are nice and simple. This is kind of a boring part. Not very exciting about this, but you know, hey, it's part of the deal. I've gotta say that Marshall is a really good company. If you can support American products, I always, I always think we should. Uh, I think that they make a great looking product, a great functioning product. So uh, sometimes American made products, you can't really, it's really hard to find good quality in certain things. Like as a backpacker, there's not a lot of options for American made backpacking products, uh, but you know, there are some, and so I try to use them. This doesn't seem like it'll fit on there very good, so looks like we're gonna skip that one, and we're gonna put this one in. So I'm gonna cut these off. Now, if you didn't learn anything from me in building this car, you always wanna wear some sort of eye protection. And it may look crazy, but I had a piece of metal that I was cutting that was about this big, that flew up and hit me in the face. Broke my tooth, broke the root of my tooth, took a big chunk out of my lip. It was on a Friday, just like, well, this is a Saturday, but so on a Friday evening, I sat in the emergency room for about uh, three or four hours, got a few stitches, and it cost $10,000. cost me $10,000 for that simple little mistake. So I don't do that anymore. So I'm actually I'm gonna put this on real quick, and we'll go from there. There we go. Yep, if you ever watch shows and you wonder why they do things, you're like, oh man, that's overkill. I don't need to do all that. There's a reason why most of these people do these things that they do. It's because there was a problem. Problem, and they said, you know what? Man, I do not ever want that to happen again. So now we'll tighten those up. I don't even really think that I need a tool to do it. But I think that I can just do it by hand. So the thing that some people are going to get mad about 
is that I have zero success in soldering wires. It's absolutely zero. I mean, I just can't do it. So I will definitely concur that it is a better solution. There is not even, you will not get me to argue about that. I will 100% agree that there, that is a better solution if you can do it. The thing is, is that I just can't do it, okay? And I just don't have any luck. So whether or not that's better, it doesn't matter because I can't do it. So I'll be using all crimp connect. Whether you like that or not, that's what I'm going to be doing. Now, if you want to tell me about how crimp connectors are bad or do something like that, you can leave it in the comments. I'll, I'll read it. I read all the comments, but you have to understand that you have, you can only do, can't do everything, right? So you gotta understand, I've done everything to this car. Every single thing. I mean, my buddy's building the motor, but everything else I've done. I even, you know, built the rear end. You know, I mean, I got it as a kid and I, I put it all together. Hopefully it doesn't leak, we'll see. But you know, so when you do every single thing to a car, you really have to realize that there are limits to what you can and can't do. And if you don't think so, go try to be a professional or something. And then you'll realize that, hey, you know what? I'm not as good at this as I thought I was, you know? So that's all. I wonder why that one doesn't have a connector there. All of the other ones have, maybe it's because it's a voltmeter. They don't really need a, a second connector, I don't know weird but i'm not even sure if i have terminals that are small enough for this because these are just so small honestly like i have some pretty small terminals and i'm gonna check and see if i have some that are this small but i'm looking at it i think this might be part of the only part of the video that you see today so terminals are too big but let me see if i have some smaller ones so we don't have those so these are gonna go on hold but you can see them i think they look really nice we're gonna move on to these. So I'm gonna write on the back so I know which ones are which. Speedometer, tack. So some of these are common wires. We're gonna join those together. So let's start with those. We're going to do the ground wire, which will be there. Okay, so this is gonna take some 16 gauge wire, not the, not the 14 gauge that I have. All right, we can start with this. Now we get the ratcheting crimpers. Not sure why they're purple. I don't know what that's about. Never seen purple ones, but these, once you squeeze them all together, then they pop out. There we go. Nice connect. We'll do the grounds first. This little tool is nice because you can lock it on there and then slide your wire in and then you squeeze it. If you squeeze it all the way, it pops loose. So I'm not sure if you can see this or not. Let me look in the camera here and see. But if you see, there's a yellow, blue, and red. So it shows you which wires to use. See that? So if you put the open end on this, the dot is, Click it just one click and it stays in there. And you can hold it a lot easier that way. Then I'll come over here and get these two wires together. Now, I'm sure that I'm doing this wrong and I'm sure somebody's gonna be in the comments telling me because that's what everybody does. And I appreciate it. All the way together, there we go. Now I'm gonna run my normal black wire. On these, I'm gonna run this wire to where it basically will go all the way to the radio area. So I'm gonna have a couple feet of wiring. It just makes it easier. I kind of prefer that. If you've ever worked on a car, and you've had those short little wire terminals, you know, like, damn, why didn't they just make this a little bit longer? It's make this a lot easier. I mean, I know that they're just trying to save a penny here and there, and it adds up by the end of, you know, after you make a million cars, but come on, man, it's just like, dang. It's like, it just makes it such a pain when you're working on them. This little tool is really nice. It, you know, it, it, you never, like when you do other ones, you're not really sure if it's, if it's far enough type of deal. I'm going to label this wire so later on I can easily do it. If you're ever doing a lot of wiring in a car or anything, if you're in a garage, like these label makers, this thing is so nice. They're so cheap. I think I paid like 20 or 30 bucks for it. And it just, you see all my drawers, they're all labeled because I'm not as, I don't have as good a memory as I like to think I do. So, so you know, it's like, man, like how do I, how do I make it to where... I can make it dummy proof, right? So you have lamp one or dash light. We've got to have a 12 volt source battery. We'll hook that up next. So we're going to label both ends of these wires. I'm telling you right now, it's just easier to do this than try to figure out which one it is later on. Kira, now we're going to move on to the battery source, which is 12 volt. I'm not a fan of purple. Just to be clear, it's just not a, not a color I like. I think it's weird. I've always thought it was a weird color. If you like purple, let me know. So I know not to hang out with you. No, I'm just kidding. We've got a battery right there. And if you look at that, it makes a nice little square connection. Here we go. You see, it makes a nice little square connection. It's really pretty cool. It's a great connection. So this is for the battery. That's my neighbor. 
just about every night around this time, he goes to the store and gets a snack, comes back. It's kind of funny. I made a joke with him one time about it. He's like, how did you know? I'm like, man, you do it every night, man. And what else are you doing this late at night? Every single night. You know, he's a good Christian guy. He's not going out to get a drink or something like that, you know? Or anything crazy. Now I need to mark this other one battery. Now with the big wires, I only use black for ground because I used to do electrical work a long, long time ago and blacks were always ground. Oh, it looks like my pizza's here already. Oh, that's pretty cool. He's driving up, they're driving up in a Camaro. Uh, that's pretty cool. So now we do the accessories. So now we need the speedometer signal. All right, so we got all those done. Now let's tape it all up. All right, so there we go with that. So I'm gonna try to test one just to make sure I know what I'm doing here. That's how it works, I guess. Start with the shortest one. Now you just have to remember to put the long part inside there first. Push the wire in, squeeze it all the way, release it out, boom, solid connection. Man, that is so nice, I'll tell you what. Wow, now I see all the rave about these things. So much easier. Deutsch connectors, way to go, way to go. So all you do is you take the longer end of the pin. Notice that, let me see if I can hold that. You can't really do it, but if you notice there's a longer end, you put the longer end in there, there's a little stop. And then as you squeeze it, it's got these four teeth on there that bite down. And crimp it. Then you put the wire in there, squeeze it all the way till it locks, and pop it out. There we go. We have all of the wires now. Pops right in, and they click in place. There we go. The lights in there. Okay. We got that one in there. The last two are going to be the ground and the power. There we go. Now I know that there is a wedge. There we go. All right. So there we go. We have our speedometer wired up. Put it right in there. We've got the female version of the plug. Pretty cool. It's gonna be so much faster. These things right here, so much faster. This is a J already. I bought this on Amazon. I think it was originally like 160 or 170 dollars, but I had a 10 dollars off. You know, nice thing about being here in Central Florida is everything is like same day or next day delivery. The Deutsch connectors I got from Monkey Fat Garage. You should check them out. They're a great group of guys. They really helped me out with my build. They answer a lot of questions for me with wiring and stuff like that. Mikey and all them, they're just, they're just, those two guys, they're phenomenal. Like when it comes to like custom turbo flanges and stuff like that, their, their, their work is incredible. They get, they can do just so much things that you don't realize. Like that's, that's what you get when you get the power of a small shop that's selling parts and stuff like that. They, I mean, when I put this in, they, I got a notification it was shipped like in an hour or something like that. It was so fast. It's not like days and I ordered this on... Thursday afternoon, and it's here Saturday. Now, I don't, I don't know how fast you get it everywhere, but for me, it was like either, it was two days, like not the next day, because it was in the afternoon, but it was, it was you know, two days, so fast. And this kit right here, this kit comes with so many different sizes. It's got the male and the female. So six plugs, these are all six plugs. These are three plugs. These are two plugs. You know, the males, the females. Uh, it's got, I bought the kit with the tool for the smaller ones, but I also have the, the reason I have this one is because this tool will do all of these, but it won't do the 12 gauge. So I bought this and it'll do all of those. So it's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, so this one is two, 
four, six, eight, 10, 12. This is a 10, I mean, this is a 12 plug tool. So what's cool about Deutsch connectors is like, let's say right now that I'm running a six plug, right? So let's say that I add more stuff to this for whatever reason, say it's lighting. I can go back and deep pin these really easily. Just pull that little plug off the front right there. I can just pull that out, push those pins back through. You know, like once I unlock them, push them back through, and then I can move it over to an eight pin and a 12 pin or 10 pin or whatever and keep going on. Or let's say I get rid of some of this stuff and I don't need it. And I'm like, well, I don't need, I don't need a six pin here. All I need is a four pin plug. I can take them out, put them in a four pin plug and they're reusable. It's not like a one-time use. Like those cheaper plugs, like you can't even get those apart. You, you, you just can't even do it. So if you've used one of those, you know that they're a pain. So these ones, these are just incredible. So you really, you know, should check out Deutsch connectors and check out this kind of stuff. Like there's a guy on, on, on online right now that's building a um, McLaren that was flooded here in Florida. And the reason he's able to rebuild a lot of it is because all the wires were weather sealed. They're not like regular plugs. So the, the wires didn't get any kind of corrosion because they're just, they're completely sealed. Like this is completely sealed. So like when this, when this cap goes on here, this is a sealed unit. There's no connections in there. There's, I mean, there's no thing. So, and this tool right here will do from, uh, looks like 22 gauge all the way up to 12 gauge. So it's really nice. You just pull it out and slide it. I guess that cat makes this same tool and it's uh, a lot more expensive, of course. But, so I wanna show you. This is that, oh, that's a lot better view there. So if you notice it, when you squeeze it, it squeezes all four sides in, not just like something else. So I don't really feel that there's any kind of better way to make a crimp connection than these right here. This is just incredible. All right, so that's how we did it. That's how we wired up the gauges. Check them out, man. Aren't they freaking cool? We got them to work for the Chevelle. And I just have to get a some sort of input from the transmission to the speedometer. But the RPM gauge is definitely going to be able to hook right up to the Terminator X Max. Uh, but I don't know because the transmission on the 4L80, it has a VSS sensor, but that has to go to the, the, the max, I'm pretty sure. And I don't think that you can you can split it because I think it messes with the computer. So I'm gonna I'm gonna look more in that. If you know about how to make aftermarket speedometers work with the Terminator X Max, do comment please and send a link or something because I would just love that. Anyway, listen, I got a lot of really great things coming down the pipe. We got the fuel pump, we got that in this week. We got the torque converter, the stall converter from Hayes that's rated for 1200 horsepower, 24 to 2800 RPM stall, that's kind of an estimate. And so many other things. I have to get a new fuel sending unit because the one that I got just doesn't work for my tank. But I'm telling you right now, this car is moving along finally again. For a while, it seemed like you were just kind of watching me do kind of the same kind of stuff. And that's why I felt that's why I wasn't posting a lot of videos. But now it's like I'm really starting to do stuff. I was able to get the, the turn signals working. I was able to, to decode the, the, the wiper control motor with my buddy Chris today. He came over and helped me out. Thank God. Thank you, buddy. And uh, I also was able to get the high beams, I mean, the, the headlights, the high beams, the low beams working, the turn signals working, and I was able to wire up the, the make the relay setup. It's a dual five pin relay setup to control the, the window motors. So I got that taken care of on the driver's side. Now I just got to do the, the passenger side. I was able to make the ignition work on the, out of the Camaro steering column for my car. So it's going to look like it's, you know, it's, I didn't want to have a bunch of different buttons, right? Cause you didn't want to, I don't want to have that beautiful dash then have some bum, you know, universal kind of switches on it. I wanted it to look like, like you just took that out of that. Like you just put this car on top of a Camaro essentially when you sit inside. And so far, so far I've been able to do that. The, the stereo is going to be wired up soon because I've got the special little connectors for the speakers. I wanted to get the right ones because they're different sizes this way. There wouldn't be any confusion. Like if somebody ever goes to, work on their car again, they won't be like, oh, which one goes where? And then when I always did it before, I always had like the same size ones and I was always like, which one went where? And sometimes I'd have to take my doors apart to kind of switch them around. So those will be here tomorrow. So hopefully this week, the most of the car will be wired up because my buddy Mike only has a little bit of work left to do on the motor before. It is finally ready to come home. I am so, so, so excited about that. And my buddy Billy, he's he's welling up the uh, my turbo flanges because where the turbo flanges are, those have to be professionally welded. I can do decent welds and you know, I got a good course. I got a lot of people who would hate my welds. I don't really care. You're not buying, you're not, you're not building it. I'm building it with all that I can do. I know my limits. They are structural. They're not pretty. But anyway, uh, for, for the headers though, 
the, the turbos are going to carry those those turbo manifolds are going to be having so much weight because those gg45s are so heavy and i wanted those done professionally i wanted those to be so so strong and they're going to be thanks to everybody who's been helping me you don't understand how much i appreciate it i really do and all the people that have been following me along i really really appreciate it, it really has inspired me i don't think that i would have gotten this far on this car without all the people encouraging me and so it just shows that you really should encourage more people. It just, because somebody like me, even though it's a strange, like I don't look for people's opinions, I don't really care, but getting a kind word is always, it, nobody is gonna turn down a kind word. So, hey, y'all have a great day. Tell me what you're building, show me some pictures, tag me in your videos, let me know because I wanna see what the people who follow me, what they're doing. Have a great day.